they become able to invade a group of cells in whom command they accumulate more and more mutation, they become able to metastasize and so on. So carcinogenesis resulting from accumulation of multiple genetic alterations, I think it's just in, in, in one mutation, multiple genetic abnormalities that give rise to the transformer phenotype. Tumor compression, stepwise accumulation of mutations resulting in greater malignant potential. And the right way to show how it's very at the molecular level, tumor progressions uh, associated with heterogeneity are most likely to result from multiple mutations. You can really accumulate more and more mutations, especially if they are very novelty dividing. Most malignant tumors are monoclonal in origin, but at the time they become clinically evident. They constitute maybe extremely heterogeneous genus or heterogeneous. Heterogeneous regarding the genetic makeup. Hi, this is an illustration. So, they have the hypothesis say, in a single cell, hi, can don't have you, and it goes a non-lethal DNA damage. Lesh, but I'm not going to be part of the environmental factors, like the irradiation, ultraviolet light, and I'm going to be other carcinogenic factors in the Kena. It accumulates again a physically hard non lethal damage and it becomes a tumor cell. The Vidani is again the cells that are in dark orange color. Hello, they have the same genetic makeup. Hello, the Sabino clone. These are clones. It's a cell, a result of transformation, or a result of DNA damage. Later on, Hello cells, they give. They accumulate, they have a balanced cell, so we have a mutation transformed into the light orange part. And then another clone, another clone of a single tumor is heterogeneous. Heterogeneous, I mean, genetic material is variable. If I think one method, so I think one required pure drug factors, the light orange, non antigenic, the blue. Uh, invasiveness and elastic. So, how the tumor constitutes our accumulation of these mutations, the tumor is able to evade, metastasize, evade the immune system and the blood, if you remember the Akena, and it, hold, it has the full picture of the malignancy. Hello, I think I have a good feature of the Halka. So, the hallmark of cancer. Is self sufficiency in growth signals, the electronic MLO, insensitivity to growth inhibiting signals, limitless development of potential, development of sustained angiogenesis, it, it is able to uh, generate more and more blood vessels, cells that are proliferating, invasive ability, metastatic ability, reprogramming of energy metabolism. كما نحكي كان الإيفاجن في الإيميون سيستم بس يدخل على البلد ليش ما بصير لدستراكشن باي دي إيميون سيستم جيناميك إنستابلتي and tumor promotive information أول شيء البروسيك نص رح نحكي شوي على النور بل إيش اللي بصير under the normal conditions so what happens إيش اللي بيخلي السل to grow أو to divide so the gross signals إيش اللي بصير under normal conditions a growth factor binds to a growth factor receptor, the bone, and then it initiates a single transduction event, like signal, sorry, transduction event, until it reaches to the nucleus where the proliferation of the cell, or the division of the cell. This is under normal conditions. Our sheet. The, the process to be initiated does not include the binding of a growth factor to the receptor. But why I'm talking of the tumor cells, how the growth factor has a receptor to the activation. So at the normal conditions, does a growth factor insert a growth factor receptor. Transient, shrimp transient, for a period of time, which is permanent. 
something that happens. Ishakel mu'akkad, transient, yani ishakel mu'akkad. Transient and the letter. Kaman invitation. Kahini kima shway, ilo fi ba'd al-inhibitory signals. Ili lazim ikun tuk yit hai process of relocation. Limited activation of growth factor receptor, which in turn activates several signal transducing proteins. Transmission, by the third, you have a signal transduction, transduce signal across the cytosol of the nucleus, induction of and activation of the nuclear regulatory factors that initiate and regulate the DNA transcription, and the entry and progression of the cell into the cell cycle, resulting ultimately into cell division. This is under more normal conditions. So she, it is dependent on growth factor, binding of a growth factor, binding, transient and limited activation, signal transduction, uh, activation of the nuclear regulatory proteins for the DNA replication, and then division of the cell. Then again, it has to be transient and limited. When we see the limitation, it can be growing cells to grow out of control, usually in normal cells. It could be involving growth factor, it could be involving a cell surface receptor, a signal transduction protein, a nuclear transcription factor, and the cell cycle proteins. So, the the first one is oxygen coding growth factors. The yani, machine stepwise process. Yani, the developer can acknowledge this as binding of growth factor, binding of the receptors, binding of signal transduction, binding of the DNA regulatory proteins. So the first one is growth factors. <coughs> Oncogenes coding for growth factors. Normally, under normal conditions, a growth factor in the distagibial cell should be synthesized in another type of cell. Yeah, the growth factor must see become synthesized by the same cell. But you know, the, yeah, the, the end result is called the uncontrolled growth of this cell. But in tumors, actually, you see, they synthesize their own all the, the stimulatory growth factors for the cells themselves. Example, I have the glioblastoma. Glioblastoma is a tumor. You see the central nervous system, the glial cells. And it's a very highly, uh, a very high, uh, great tumor. You see the death of the patient within months. The glioblastomas, they produce their own growth factor. Their own growth factor. So they have plated derived growth factor receptor and they synthesize plated derived growth factor. So this leads to very high replication of this tumor. Many sarcomas also makes both transforming growth factor alpha and S receptor. Let's pay attention in the transforming growth factor alpha is a growth factor by number beta, transforming growth factor beta. It's a tumor suppressor. So pay attention. The growth factor receptors, the growth factor receptors, if I see the home, it's what I call overactive will see the home in activation. Overactive. So mutant receptor proteins continuous signal even in the absence of growth factors. So if you know the abnormal proteins, they could activate the heteronomic growth factor. Uh, about the uh, mass The other thing is sometimes the other receptors they got overexpress. Should I overexpress Katiana? That the vector the overexpression or the whole amplification. You see here, and the number of these copies are increased. All the machine, if you remember, you will see the transformation, which you have a locus, which is very actively expressed. So examples are the epidermal growth factor receptor. Epidermal growth factor receptor is of, of, of two types, B1 and B2. B1 is overexpressed in 80% of squamous cell carcinomas of the lung, and B2 of the new head to new old, it's not on the tear, the breast pathology, is amplified in 25 to 30% of the air of the breast. 
with breast, breast cancers, and if you have heart new mutation, I will add beta mutation, and go by an 11 blood factor receptor. We call command high grade, and we call very rapidly proliferating. We carry back prognosis, and if uh, breast cancer is not in heart new mutation, they do much better than heart new mutated breast cancers. هذا الفيديو شوفوه at home. It's very very يعني بيعطيكم الآلية بس وقتي في الجروب وقت والجروب وقت بسيرة ليك وين بسيرة ميتيشن بسوي. وين وصلنا هلا خلصنا الجروب وقت. تركوش مع بعض يا شباب. خلصنا الجروب وقت والجروب وقت ريسبتر نيجي على السيجنال ترانسكشن بروسس. Signal transaction process is very important. Which is involved in which is involved in the signal transaction is very common oncogene. It's the commonest oncogene mutated in the human cancers. Thank you. That's like oncogenes, okay? RAS protein are inactive with oncogene. Two should keep you seeing more activation when they bind bind to GTP. And you see what they are phosphorylated, and when they get a phosphate group, they become activated. But push. by the GTPAs, but it pertains to the inactive form. So this is the inactive gas, POGTP, two phosphate groups. Once it becomes phosphorylated, it means a phosphate group, basically in the GTP, a la locus, a la locus in the protein, parallel activation. A RAS oncogene, a small oncogene, it initiates a cascade of events, permanently cell proliferation. Lamycere RAS is mutated, surely this year. Lamycere mutated, we bought the list of GTPA this, and my locus is not responding to GTPA this, so it becomes constantly activated. Or, I'll show you. أو إنها بصير في abnormalities in the function of the GTPases يعني بيكون الراس ما فيه abnormality بس the GTPases أو اللي هم GAPs اللي هو GTPases activating proteins they become mutated and they do not do the function as it is. هلا بعد شوي يعني شو؟ so راس proteins زي ما حكينا when they bind to GTP they are inactive. Once they bind to GTP, they become active. Actually, controls this process in the GTP axis. They move, they transfer GTP to GTP back from CT and activation to the RAS. The activated RAS, they have a signal transduction protein, so it initiates a cascade of events for proliferation. GTP axis, they have a are controlled by GTP axis activating proteins or GAPs. My name is GAPs, this is the Axel RAS, or the RAS. Axelras. They activate the GTPAs in the Verja, the sheet phosphate group, and GTP, and we have the GTP Verja in the active form. Plus, the gene most commonly activated by point mutation among the acid residues within the GTP binding pocket or the entire division essential for GTP hydrolysis. And but it prevents hydrolysis of GTP. Oh, you see the constant activation or constant binding by the GTP binding points. Point mutations are present in more than 30 percent of cancers like pancreas and colon, and it's the most commonly mutated proto-oncogene in human tumors. Okay, so RAS is very commonly involved in human genes. Loss of function, if you remember. Of the GTPAs activating proteins, the gas, permanent activation of the RAS, like no 
the controlling part or the controlling factor is not there, and obviously we don't know constantly activated in us. This early mutation, we had all the GAPs, the green again are neurofibromatosis one and F1. Again, we have neurofibromas, the 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 man having a lot of skin lesions, again had all the neurofibromas, we see you well the nasty intermutation in the NF1. So actually the result of the NF1 mutation, constant activation of the RAS protoncogene or RAS oncogene, okay? Second type of signal transduction protein is the ABL. What have you done the ABL, if you remember? What have you done ABL? Have you done the transomal abnormalities? If you remember, we have done the CT trans, trans, the whole like translocation of the chromosomes, the visual two chromosomes together, they form a new, once again, a novel protein. So ABL, non-receptor tyrosine kinase function as signal transduction molecule, the ABL proto-oncogene has tyrosine kinase activity, the tyrosine kinases, they initiate command, the growth of the uh, division of the cell. Well, uh, the CML, our chronic pyrogenous leukemia, but at Arena, 9 to 22 translocation, the remaining PCR ABL gene contains the tyrosine kinase domain. A new protein that has maintained tyrosine kinase activity and it feels the constant stimulation by the tyrosine kinase like uh, protein. Activates all the signals that are downstream of the RAS. These are ABL kinase inhibitors in the retina or glivic mistamilo as a targeted therapy, three and targeted therapy. One of the therapies, we have to come out of the health of you, mutated breast cancer, the stamil, a drug that targets the cells or the gene product at the level of the gene. It targets the protein that will come in an abnormal related gene. Or the stamina clinic or imagine it for the treatment of CML, drugs that target specific molecule lesions that harm in various cancers. Generally, chemotherapies, types of chemotherapies, does not target the tumor the hala. Janek Nas drug the chemotherapy should say that harm. The serial of hair loss, soft, serial of acceleration in the GI tract, the serial to harm uh it's not only just the tumor, it might be not just the tumor cells. It can be the chemotherapy, but it's not only just the tumor cells. It's not only just the tumor cells, so I'm not going to do it. Conventional chemotherapy. The targeted therapy is to work on the protein product of the mutated gene. It targets only the cells that are cancerous. Nuclear transcription factors, they are involvement in the transcription and the, pro the progression of the cell cycle. Let me examples are the MEC, the MYB, JYN, FOS, REL of the genes. They regulate expression of promoting genes such as the cyclins. But I'm going to show the cyclins will cycle dependent, dependent kinases. What you should do? So MEC protein, gamble activation of the cyclin dependent kinases and inhibition of the inhibitors. So it stops the inhibition part of the CDKIs. Of the dependent kinase inhibitors. MEC mutation, gamble sustained activation and example, I will have deregulation of the MEC in Burkitt's lymphoma. But I'll show you the truth about the HLS and Chalma. Burkitt's lymphoma command is a very rapidly Dividing the core because the rate of division is 100%. Cool the cells, the tumor cells, they undergo division. So it's very, very uh, rapidly uh, dividing cells because of the presence of the neck abnormalities or, or neck uh, mutation. 
So when we show you cyclin dependent kinases and cyclins, they are important in the progression of the cell cycle. So cyclin, the, cyclin D and cyclin dependent kinase number four slash six is the important map to cyclin E and cyclin dependent kinase two in the progression from G1 to the S phase. By the cyclin A and cyclin dependent kinase number two, progre progression of the cell to the M phase, command cyclin B, cyclin dependent kinase one, and the uh, progression into the M phase. So cyclins, or cyclin dependent kinases, are the real cell division. And I think that in novel, make abnormalities, as you see, the same thing on inhibition of the inhibitors and activation of the cyclin dependent kinases. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how do you now, through the cell cycles related by proteins called cyclins? And cyclin dependent kinases, cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors. Right. Here I'm talking about the tumors to see if we have inhibition of abnormalities in the cyclin dependent kinase function or cyclin dependent kinase inhibitory function. So cyclin D, is important in the transformation of the cell realm of the progression of transformation, the progression of the cell from the G1 to the S phase. Yeah, or uh, is always expressed in breast liver and esophageal cancers. Application of cyclin dependent kinase for command for melanoma, sarcomas, and glioblastomas. Cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors, super talk icon, we know this abling, will over activation, this abling. So are frequently disabled by mutations, or gene silencing in many human pregnancies. Hello, Dr. Arbella. Thank you. 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 Thank can a cell function see in gross signaling? Okay, now, I'm not going to add the to block inhibiting signals. The total cell surgery does block inhibiting factors or signals. So, the way you block inhibiting signals, she was on your home. Tumors are crystal genes, or cancers are crystal genes. So, the growth inhibitory signals or pathways. They either regulate the cell cycle, the original blastoma, they regulate the cycle at the apoptosis, the P53, blocks the growth factor signals. If you remember, you can transform the growth factor alpha as a growth factor, but in a beta is a, block, a blocker of, so it's a tumor suppressor gene, and the ABC Finish the other one, had the label RB. RB is for, yeah, so we know RB, like, you know, it was first discovered, the original blastoma tumor. The original blastoma is a tumor disease as well. That's the cool. You see the children in the orbit of the eye. So it was discovered, our mother, the original blastoma tumor, which is a minor RB gene, the original blastoma gene. So it, it could be inherited as a bizarre dominant hereditary disease in 40% of cases, or sporadic, in a sporadic, see the environmental factor, primary mutation and the gene. Patients are also, without the original blastoma, are at greater risk of development of osteosarcomas. Fairly common feature also in breast cancer, small cell carcinoma of the lung, and the cancer. When it is high focus correlated become active. So who were the an infarction to act acts the drugs, it acts could it cannot be phosphate group bound to X before high focus correlated become active. The mutation phosphate groups in C1 original blastoma gene in activation. So it's active when hypophosphorylated and inactive when it is hyperphosphorylated. 
The importance lies in the regulation of the progression from G1 to the SA. Hello. Refactored in the middle, Mabem, a cyclin E or cyclin dependent by these two complexes, and the original Bascoma function. The new issue is an E2 up family. So, when hypothesis were related, the hypothesis were related to active or inactive? Inactive. Sorry, active. Hypothesis were related to become active. It binds to and inhibits the E2 up family protein. Hello, I just couldn't hear her. Preventing the transcription of cyclin E. Okay, so in the initial horn, cyclin E and cyclin dependent cyclin 2 is important in the progression from G1 to S phase. Now, by C, original gas homology is active, pivotal activation of transcription of cyclin E through an intermediate in between a level E to F family protein. Hi, Shaykhir. The RB, Marky Array Phosphate groups, is active, basic my E2F, which stops the function of the E2F. E2F is permanent expression or transduction of the cyclic dependent kinase cyclin E. Now I see phosphorylated through the right pathway, zero phosphorylation, basically in phosphate groups, to see it. And after contribute to off, will lead to off very much transcription of the um, cyclin E and the cell processes from the, the G1 into the S phase. Function of the RB, retinal blast homology. Okay, so you have the cyclin dependent, cyclin dependent findings is complexes, very many homocyphy transcription, and they um, they move the cell, or they move the cell, they progress through G1 to the S phase. <coughs> but not see proliferation of a cell under normal conditions, how does that these cells to divide a homocyphal and by the last mother? So what happens, we see the removal of the uh, phosphate from the retinal blastoma. It retains to the through phosphatases, which are the hypophosphorylated form in the active form. But I'm showing it too for the UGS. And now the cervical cancer is at the end of the part of the endometrial cancer, every portion of endometrial cancers are caused by Human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus, but shway from a red tubo, you know, it's one of the carcinogenic viruses. H can be carcinogenic viruses, and an infection or an infectious etiology of cancers, we love the human papilloma virus. It's not by virus, huh? There are many types of lymphomas, but shway in tubo that papilloma. Command an H. pylori infection, family gastric lymphoma. We talk to you later on. So, H. pylori the human papilloma virus is carcinogenic. The E7 protein binds to the hypophosphorylated form of RB. We have a blockage to the site of binding into F. Ashan Hek, serial RB is unable to bind to the E2F, where the cell starts to divide and proliferate, apparently. Cervix cancer, cervical cancer, so very common, uh, the veteran cancers. Hi, I should see it. A retinal blastoma, the more the locus for the bind of E2F, we see the blockage by the E7 part, part of the uh, virus, the human papilloma virus. That prevents the RB from binding to the uh, E2F, and this leads to consistent activation or uh, consistent expression of the cyclin E, cyclin dependent kinases, and the cell divides. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.